Hi YouTube, this is Patrick and this is my review of Breaking Bad Season 5, Episode 6. Sorry this one's a little late, I uh, caught it a little bit later than I normally would have. Uh, this one was kind of a, more of a reset episode. Be, you know, after last week's big like train heist and the way it ended, the characters kind of had to regroup a bit, especially with only two left before the, um, the mid-season finale, I guess, if that's what you want, that's what they want to call it. So because of that, and the episode was good, it had you know, a lot of strong uh, individual scenes in it, but the overall feel of the episode I thought just felt a little less satisfying. Just one, coming off the week before, and two, this one was a lot about dealing with the fallout from last week's episode and getting ready to move forward for the last two. Um, so it just, in a way, it could feel less satisfying because of that, but also because we don't know how these last two are going to work out, so it's better to really look at it again in the long run. Uh, again, I'm not saying it's bad or anything. I just think um, just maybe the placement of it with only two left can be a little irritating for some people. The opening of the episode was one of the strongest moments of it with uh, no music. Pretty much, yeah, I don't think there was any... Or no, there was music, there just wasn't any sound. It, um, I was wondering if they were going to have to do you know, that to the kid with the, uh, the acid. And it's something we've seen so many times before in the show and... The second you saw the barrel, like, for the first time, there's really, like, a sense of dread when you see it. Even though the kid's already dead, it's just, um, it was very, like, you know, sobering. And you could tell, like, you know, Mike didn't take it well because he was threatening Todd. Jesse obviously didn't take it well. And even Walt didn't look, although we don't know these days when Walt's faking his feelings or not, as he did later on in the episode. But I think even he was, you know, was probably a little disturbed by it. I hope so, anyway. Um... Jesse just punched Todd, with which he deserved deserved much more than that. I liked how they they you know decided on what to do with him. Um, Walt laid out the really only three options, and yeah, they went with what would be the best one. But I think the big kicker of the scene was probably uh, that Todd has the tarantula still in the jar. Usually, nothing gets left alone in the show, so that jar will either come back to haunt them, like someone's gonna see him with it. That might be a stretch. Either that, or it's just supposed to show us that Todd really is nuts, and he's gonna fuck it up again. Uh, even worse. He's definitely gonna fuck it up again, that's for sure. Basically, then the rest of the episode kind of dealt with the fact that Mike and Jesse want out. And it was for two separate reasons. Mike's reasons was he's being trailed by the DEA, and he knows that they're just it's a matter of time before he, for, before he messes up, and they do catch him, as Hank said. Uh, nice use of... Uh, bad language on the show which you know when the show is over and people buy the dvd or blu-ray it's just gonna you know it's not gonna be censored so that's that's whatever but uh that was funny and it was also nice to see saul again we haven't seen him for i, I don't know if it's been three weeks but um it's always funny to watch him in the lawyer scenes uh it was shot very dark too i noticed as if maybe we sh shouldn't have been as lighthearted or things really are serious as that what it was supposed to mean i don't know but I like that Mike realized it bought him 20, you know, a very little amount of time. I think Saul said like 24 hours, so he tried to make that deal and tried to get out right away, which would be the smart thing to do. Jesse, as everyone probably expected, took it the worst, and he was hurting the most. Um, great scene when they were uh, cooking at the next house, and Jesse was watching it on the, the television. Aaron Paul is very, very good. And um, he's had a couple moments like that where he just kind of sits down and looks like so sad, and it's just so much more affecting. I don't know why. But uh, he gets so broken up over things. And it's, again, it's almost something where you think about if he finds out the truth about what Walt's done, just how ridiculous things are going to get. Um, but he did see some of that truth in the scene with Walt just, you know, whistling and just not giving a shit and obviously lying. So I think that, that with the combination of what happened to the kid, made him want to go out, too. So this is basically all dealing with the aftermath of what happened in the previous week. All right, before I get into uh, the aftermath of that stuff, I'll just quickly go over to Marie and Skyler. This was a scene where, you know, it was it had a very predictable outcome. It was, you know, tense. Like, is she going to say something? But obviously a lot of us, I'm sure, thought that she wasn't. Uh, but I thought it was interesting that we're running out of time for scenes like that, for when someone doesn't find out something. So this may be one of the last times we see it. And... Um, I predicted earlier in the season that Skyler's re really is just going to go 
like maybe off the deep end when she finds out that Walt told Marie about what ha about the uh, affair, and she automatically turned from being very sad to being you know really pissed off about it and even laughed about it. So um, yeah, good scene. Well done. That further led excuse me, that further led into the dinner scene with Walt, Jesse, and Skyler. Which is something that would have been like mind blowing in the first couple of seasons, but now it's just you know that's how deep in like Skyler is with all this, and uh, the scene was so funny and so awful. Uh, Aaron Paul was just you know hilarious the whole time, just the way he was eating, the way he just didn't want to look at anyone. Um, Anna Gunn was great, just or just you know her wine glass wasn't like three quarters, wasn't even a quarter empty. She started refilling it again. But as funny as the scene was, and it really was funny, it was really upsetting because I kind of missed the time when Skyler and Walt used to just argue and really yell at each other. But now, you know, she doesn't even want to do that. She's, she's just done and just resents him with everything. And it's just, um, it's a sad thing to see because as annoying as, you know, I always found her or certainly used to, you know... It's not like he didn't want the mar their marriage to just go to shit. That's certainly not one of the things he wanted when he started this, and it has. And, uh, yeah, it's just really, really sad. As funny as the scene was, I found it actually more depressing. Even better, though, was all the stuff with Jesse and Walt talking. I love how Jesse in this episode just pointed out the obvious to Walt. You know, saying that $5 million isn't pennies, or $5 million isn't, you know, nothing. And that... You know, not taking a buyout now is very different when you're doing it from a legitimate, you know, business. Like, this will not end well. Just get out. Walt, you know, tried to justify it by using the whole gray matter thing. And again, Jesse, you know, kind of, that's why I said, like, it's not, you know, a legit business. Uh, the meth is, obviously. But it's almost like Walt doesn't even, I don't even think Walt believes that. You know, that's not the reason he's doing it. He's doing it because he's obsessed and because he's broke so bad that he, you know, can't break back anymore. Or well, maybe he will be able to, but it doesn't look like it. Um, and at the dinner table, the way he kind of said, you know, she took my children away from me and um, she wants me to get, you know, cancer again and you're trying to take this away from me. Like, he's wrong about all three. You know, she took the kids away, you know, for good reason. And she wants the cancer to come back for good reason. Maybe not the best reason, but it's, you know, she does, it's like she doesn't have a reason for it. You keep, like, she told you. And you know, Jesse's not trying to take anything away from you, from him. It's just, he, he wants out. You're the one, and Walt's the one really tr taking things away here, and he doesn't see it. And I really don't like the guy. And I said this last week, I don't, I don't like this guy. I, I, I don't want to see this guy get his comeuppance because I know the second he does, it's going to be like old Walt again and it's going to hurt like hell. But he deserves it. Mike, the only thing I want to say about Mike and Jesse's plan, or I guess it was Mike's plan, is that I don't know if those guys in Arizona are going to become like a future problem on the show. I don't know if they're just going to be a one-off thing. Usually that's not the case with this show, but that we'll just have to wait and see. One thing that was stupid was Mike tying up Walt, even though it was nice to learn how to break out of something like that with nothing but a wire, um, I wouldn't have guessed how to do that. So, uh, yeah, again, another nice thing that Breaking Bad teaches you. But, like, why didn't he use handcuffs? And why didn't he, like, tie his feet also, you know, or both hands or whatever? And it's just, like, um, it was kind of stupid, especially for Mike. So, uh, I mean, again, it was a funny scene, it was fun, it was tense and everything like that, but um, Mike should know better. And So the cliffhanger of the episode is Walt has another idea. Now, I guess that idea is going to be put into action in the next episode. And, you know, as far as I, I, I'm concerned, I'm, I'm pretty sure we got to lose somebody in these next two, and I really don't think Mike is going gonna, is gonna to make it, because Walt was having problems with Mike anyway, but now... Now Mike's held him at gunpoint and tied him up. He's not going to handle that well. So with only two left, like something major has to happen. And um, yeah, I don't think Mike is long for this world. I can't really, 
figure out what they're going to do with two left, which is a good thing, uh, because I know it's going to be awesome. It's just, uh, I'm, I'm usually better at figuring out what's going to be coming, but I really have no idea in these last two. I was reading a review on uh, hitfix.com, very good writer, Alan uh, Sepulwell, who kind of thought this episode showcased how splitting the season or making this last season into 16 hurts the show a little bit. Uh, he felt a lot about the episode the way I did. Um, he kind of felt that this episode wouldn't have taken place had, uh, had it been a 13-episode season. They would have really crunched this. Uh, I'm not sure if that would have been the case. Maybe that's hard to say. Because um, I don't think the writers work like that. But it's, it's, it's certainly possible. I'm just not really sure about that. But, uh, you know, people were complaining about the show being too slow-paced early on, which was ridiculous. And now I hear people complaining about the show being too fast-paced. Uh, so you can't really please anyone. And um, But I'm still happy. I don't know. It's just... It does, I guess, feel a little bit different. Maybe it does. Uh, or maybe just people putting that in my head, and now I'm thinking that way. I don't know. Can't think for myself. All right, that's it, guys. I will uh, see you next week. Uh, two left. That sucks. But I'm sure they're going to be great. So, adios.